The DWP is responsible for welfare, pensions and child maintenance. Under its welfare remit is Job Centre Plus, an executive agency that helps people find employment and provides benefits to unemployed people needing support. With the work programme contracts ending in 2017, Job Centre Plus will be taking on more responsibilities and claimants. So what tools are available to help Job Centre staff with this increased workload? Well, let's first start looking at the six pillars that support the DWP's services. Secure self-service wherever possible. This encourages low-touch services, allowing customers to find what they want 24 hours a day. Decision-making based on trust and risk. This is where the customer behaviour patterns are identified and in this way recognises where individuals fall outside a pattern and personal attention is required. Intelligent data use, sharing and management. This pillar supports the enormous potential for new innovative services based on the data held by the DWP. Advanced analytics for segmentation identifies customers who may be vulnerable and require a different level of service. Automated processes create low-touch services that permit DWP staff to spend more time with their customers. And lastly, customer behaviour change is where society changes and services must adapt with agility. Let's now look at a case management tool. A good case management tool will allow each claimant to be recognised as an individual and facilitates the delivery of a personalised service. It will set out a workflow of activities for the claimant to progress through. There will be automatic nudges to encourage claimants to move to the next step. These nudges require less work coach intervention and are designed to deliver a service that cares. The system will record activities that the claimant has participated in, the recommendations made by the work coach and, importantly, the time taken to progress through each step of the workflow. A great case management tool will have such features as an analysis of the success rates of both the work coaches and the claimants as they progress through the workflows. The work coach's performance can be recognised and rewarded for getting claimants into work, the work retention period, i.e. how long they stayed in work, and the salary that was achieved and if a benefit top-up was required. A great case management system would also help both the claimant and the work coach by using artificial intelligence to review the history of previous claimants' journeys and, in so doing, suggest the most successful strategies to follow. These might be, people with your skills also looked at these jobs. Expand your commute distances with these new bus routes. Other people found employment by taking these training courses. The virtual advisor would improve its learning over time and reflect current trends and this would allow work coaches to be well informed and up to date. Gamification is increasingly being used to encourage participation in processes. When applied to finding employment, claimants can be rewarded with badges and points for completing steps in their designated case management workflow. Interestingly, the smiley face for driving below the speed limit has proven to be far more effective in reducing driver speed than the speed camera. Let's now look at the government job board. Firstly, we must address the question, why would a government have a job board when there are so many commercial job boards available? With commercial job boards, the employer is the customer and the customer is king. The employer pays the job board with the expectation that his job offer will reach a large pool of candidates. The focus here is on delivering suitable candidates to the employer. By contrast, the government job board is more three-dimensional. Its stakeholders are the job seeker, who is the primary customer, and the focus of the job board is to help the seeker find suitable employment. Employers are, of course, essential and have a symbiotic relationship with the job seekers. Businesses benefit 
by filling job vacancies through free job displays. And the third stakeholder is the work coach. Now let's look at each of these in turn. So let's start with the job seeker or claimant. Getting claimants to use a government job board can be achieved in two ways. The carrot, where the service is easy and rewarding to use, or the stick, where benefits are only paid if claimants participate. Most governments use a combination of these two, preferring to deploy the carrot in the first instance and keeping the stick in reserve. Where benefit payment is conditional on meeting work search quotas, then negative claimant behaviour can occur. Here claimants make insincere applications for jobs so that they can achieve their search targets. This is bad for the service as employers become discouraged from using the job board because they then have to process a plethora of erroneous responses to their advertisements. A good job board will provide the seeker with only the relevant jobs that match their profile without showing any duplicates, local jobs will be at the top of the list, Confidence that the application is for a genuine job vacancy. Clicking the apply button links through to the employer advertising the job and not an agency. And having applied for a job, there should be feedback on the progress of their application. And this should all be available on a mobile device. A recent survey showed that 55% of claimants use a mobile device to access job boards. And this number is increasing. There should be a help centre that provides guidance with training videos such as how to use the service and apply for jobs, interview techniques and typical interview questions. A list of free online courses where successful completion is rewarded with a certificate that enhances the seeker's CV. A self-assessment tool that allows the seekers to determine their strengths and weaknesses and provides suggestions for jobs that they would like to do, and importantly, those that they can do. This will broaden their search criteria and create new areas of interest. The recommended job types would show a description of the job and the expected duties, the typical salary, the skills required, and the availability of these jobs in the candidate's location and particularly relevant to those with little working experience, would be the ability to identify the job seeker's transferable skills and soft skills and how best to present these in a CV. Which brings us on to having a CV building tool, which should import the data from the self-assessment. CV building tools are freely available, but a great tool would allow the candidate to compare their CV with a chosen job vacancy description. The tool would then provide feedback on the match and some hints and tips on how the CV might then be improved. The job board's virtual advisor might make suggestions such as other people looking at these jobs also looked at these types of jobs. It could also suggest links to other relevant government departments like the National Apprenticeship Scheme, the National Careers Service and for migrant workers links to guidance in different languages help with housing and help with finding suitable schooling. The better the online help service is, the greater will be the reduction in the demand on Job Centre Plus resources. Other tools not provided by commercial job boards would be, for those needing instant help, a live chat facility has proven to be helpful, especially for those that find it difficult to travel. Where job searches produce few local results, a proactive approach can be encouraged by providing a list of employers that typically hire the skills searched for. The seeker can then be provided with the contact details and reach out to the employer in anticipation that they might just be making an approach in advance of job advertisements being placed. Prospective employers could be shown on a map so the seeker can quickly assess the travel distances. Where the employer has a career page, the seeker can activate a notify tool that scans the career page on a daily basis and informs the seeker when new jobs are added. This saves the seeker from checking the career page every day. The seeker can have their own personal web page that displays their picture and their CV in an attractive format. The URL for this page can be shared in communications with prospective employers. There could be a candidate dashboard that shows how many jobs there are in the local area. 
This would encourage a positive approach to the employment market. It shows that there are jobs out there and hints that a broader search might yield more results. It could show all the matching jobs posted in the last 24 hours. This provides focus for the seeker and gives the dashboard a fresh appearance every day. And there should be a diary facility where the seeker can record appointments and the tasks to be completed. A traffic light system would show green for what's been done and red for what needs to be done. And SMS and email messages can also be sent. A well-designed and integrated service will facilitate the claimant's journey and help them follow the behaviours required by Universal Credit. The job board will, therefore, need to update the claimant's Universal Credit work journal with this evidence of activity and show progress to date for the period. Our next stakeholder is the employer. And employers want a reliable low-cost method of finding the right candidate for their job vacancy, the time to hire to be fast and efficient, they want to quickly search talent pools to find suitable candidates and contact them directly, and they want to receive quality responses from genuine candidates. And they'd also like the ability to promote their business messages and their company brand. And particularly relevant to the smaller business, online training videos on how to register and post jobs would be beneficial. And our third stakeholder is the work coach. The work coach needs to be provided with useful and relevant claimant data combined with labour market information if they are going to provide useful guidance to the claimants. A work coach dashboard might therefore have the following features. The claimant's background including their skills, location and preferred commute times. The types of job the claimant has been searching for together with their location and typical salary. The ability to see a better off in work calculation for the jobs applied for. The activities the claimant has entered in their journal. And previous guidance and recommendations made to the claimant. And LMI showing which local employers are hiring and local employment trends in the demand for skills. And as said earlier, the virtual advisor could provide recommendations on potential next steps for the claimant. How might these services then be delivered? Well, all the tools described are off-the-shelf commodity products. Job boards and case management tools are freely available. And as for artificial intelligence, Amazon's Destiny and Facebook's AI-driven text classification system, Bag of Tricks, have both been made available to the public as open source products. Skill would be required to effectively link these products together and deliver a joined-up service that provides value to all stakeholders. If these applications were then installed in a government cloud, this would facilitate information sharing in real time and bring services and data to a wider audience.